Finally, it was time to deal with bedtime. Through observation, I found out that Lydia and Eddie have certainly suffered some horrific experiences when it comes to nighttime in Ghana. Eddie will tell me the dark, the dark, the dark. In Ghana, bad things happen in the dark. They come through and set fire to their shacks and whatnot. Right. Oh, we go, darling. Come on. I wanted to teach mum how to reassure all four of her kids that when it comes to bedtime, they're safe. It's extremely important to me that I'm able to pull everything together while Chris is away because I don't want him to have to worry about what's going on at home while he's in a war zone. These are lights and they go into your bedroom and they light up all pretty. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set the ambience, okay? Mum would create this really warm, inviting ambience by closing the blinds and putting up some nice colorful lights so that these kids wouldn't be scared of the dark. Look, guys. All right, everybody needs to come sit next to Mummy. Our house, safe house, right? I think the most important thing here is to set up and create a ritual to verbally reassure these kids just before they go to bed that they're perfectly safe. When a monster comes, I want to get out of here. Does Mummy keep you safe if the monsters try to come? Yeah. Yeah, Mummy's going to say, stop. You're not allowed. Eddie was hearing what Mum was saying about no monsters coming in. There's no monsters here. And you could see that she made that little boy feel very, very safe. And that moment for me was something very beautiful. All right, girls, climb into bed. Good night. And now that these kids were tucked into bed soundly, the challenge would be keeping them in the beds. I gave Mum a wind chime to hang on the back of her door so that she wouldn't get anybody in her bed unannounced. So that'll wake me up. But almost immediately, she had a visitor. Normally, I'd have a parent put a child back to bed with no communication. But we've got some real serious situations here, and so I've got to tweak the technique a little bit. I just want you to say to Elena, it's time for you to go to bed, darling. OK, it's time for you to go to bed, love. Let's go. Come on. I wanted Becky to give the kids short verbal reassurance and then put them straight back to bed. Okay. Good night, loves. I love you. Sleep well. Elena really tried the, I need you, I need you, I miss daddy, I need you. Mom, I need you. And I get to realize really quick that that's a ploy that she uses at bedtime. Mom, I need you. A little while later, both girls got out of bed. They had their lights on and they were making a right ruckus in that bedroom. I think it was really tough for mum to be firm, especially with Lydia and Eddie. Eddie and Lydia never had their own beds before they came to America. They had a family bed. So they're learning something completely new. But even so, mum followed through and she did a fantastic job. It's time to go to bed. I told the girls no more lights, no more playing. It's time for sleep. Good night. I love you. Rest well so we can have fun tomorrow. And that was it. Hey, 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 hey. Stop. You sit right here, Elspeth. No! No! You're just picking. Oh! That is enough. I'm not sitting. OK, then you can what sit there. No! I'm, she's there. No, no, I got to help her. Thank you. No, I want to well, Mum gave in to Elspeth's temper tantrum, and Moira had to move. Mum, give me some. I love this meatball. I know. You get, like, chairs Who wants sauce? Water. Can I get some more pasta? That's right, this sure pasta can. is sticky. Man, no water sauce. Is cold. And I've seen people speak to waitresses better than what these kids were speaking to their mum. I'm getting drinks right now. Get me this. Bring me that. I mean, where are the kids' right, manners? <laughs> you don't eat. No. Um, usually just because it's just, no. I'm going to fight constantly, especially the computer. They spend way too much time on the computer. You have to admit, Jessica's the one that's on it the most. My girls, Jessica and Alexi, live on the internet. She has this people, these people she doesn't even know. Probably she goes, yeah, oh, I do. She goes, yeah, I know them, but it says that there's so like her? 17 and 18. She's what's this 15 and 17 year old boy, Jessica? Because she's just trying to get me in trouble. No. Social networking sites are all the rage with the kids. But parents just can't assume, because everybody's on them, that they're safe. Parents should monitor their kids' usage, check the age limits, 
and really be aware of the sites that their kids are using. Things can happen to you, honey. You tell them you live in Las Vegas, they can wire down, you're on the computer. You can walk home one day because mom or dad can't pick you up and you can be picked up. It happens day in and day out in this town. I'm thinking to myself, how come you didn't know about this site in the first place? Your child's 11 years old and, it, and shouldn't be on a site that she's on now. It's slack parenting. It's irresponsible parenting. Lexi, come on. You can't get into her profile unless she, unless you know her password. Well, she's going to show me. I want. No, I'm not. Well, I want to see it. I'm not going to do anything. Obviously, Lexi had something to hide because she didn't want to give her password to her dad. Go. But it was a losing battle. She relented. Who are those boys? Go to a view. Yeah, well, at least I'm not like you. With you, Lexi. Like Jessica. Such I'm just a Well, you guys don't. I don't like that language. Oh, well. I'm seeing a real chink in Dad's authority. Can you go back on that, please? I mean, this is serious stuff. I'm, I'm not a to be messed with. I'm going to kill both of you. And I really couldn't believe what I was seeing because when we pulled up the stuff, there were older boys on that website. There was obscene language. There was phases and sentences that were scary. And she's an 11-year-old girl chatting with much older boys. What, I mean, is this just a saying? Yes. Well, how do I know? I mean, this is serious stuff. This goes to the next Scroll level. Scroll down and view their friends list. They are coming off, and you're going to change everything you need to on your computer. We'll do this later. Is this the first time that you've, you've aware yes, of Yes, I was never aware of this. I think it's incredibly important for parents to know exactly what their kids are doing on the computers. Well, let's just turn it off, OK? The computer is the day. So mom gets home and she barely has any time to check in with dad. Lexi, go on the computer, show your mom everything that's on it. Before he goes off to work. And there it was. She was just as oblivious. Hmm? You don't know this guy? OK, now what's this right here? Are you deleting people? Mm -hmm. OK, think. do me a favor. Slow down so I know what you're doing. My parents are completely clueless of the computer. Is this your space right now? OK, so who are all these people? People that you know? Yep. Can you get that guy back that you deleted so I can see who oh, it yeah, is? Oh, yeah, I know. No. Growing up, we didn't have computers, so it, you know, I, I don't really understand it. And this guy's 17? I don't know. Research shows that one in five children on the internet chat rooms are approached by pedophiles. My fear is that parents are not going to understand the dangers of the internet and how to protect their kids. Are you deleting more people? Uh, Tara, is this the first time that you're actually finding out information about the site? Um, I know that the, both, both of the girls are on it. Do you know um, anything about the site? These parents did no homework. They didn't work out what the site was all about. They didn't work out the protection that they could do for their child. I mean, I know nothing about this. I mean, I hear people talking about it, but I don't know. She's logged on as she's 14 years old. And she told me that you have to be 14 to be on this. So I don't even know if that's true or not, or if she's just saying she's 14 years old. The computer really has become the babysitter. If I didn't get them to be on the computer, then I wouldn't get the stuff done that I needed to get done. The computer yesterday was a joke. I'm observing watching a child who's on a computer that neither of you know how to, how to look through. That's crazy. The technology one-on-one -on -one was desperately needed in this house because the kids were on the computer 24-7. This is technology for parents, OK? It's part of the tech talk technique. It's all about knowing as much as you can with regards to the technology that your kids are dealing with. I'm not really computer savvy. I need to get more involved so that I can actually find out what my kids are up to. Number one, move family computer into a public space. What I would suggest is this area here, because you spend a lot of time in the kitchen, so that you can mosey past and take a look. This is very important, and we this do spend a lot of time here, so. See it, yeah. The second one, know your kids' passwords. This is not about you snooping. This is really about building trust. Does it mean that you're going to be looking at it every day? No. No. Does it mean you're going to be looking at it every now and then? Oh, yeah. Number three, know what sites your kids visit. 
Let's step into their world. Time is important. With these kids spending roughly four hours a day on the internet and the cell phone, setting 30 minute limits on each was essential. Not that, they should be doing other things instead of wasting their time. I want to educate myself on the computer and get just as smart as they are. <laughs> We need the speak yeah, the speakers we need. Probably right, Jess. So I decided to move the computer. Oh, and the kids were not amused. You'll be okay, baby. And I'm just like, oh my god, you know, why are you doing this to me? I don't. <laughs> okay, we got it. <laughs> Six, seven, eight. I didn't hear. I'm bored. I'm bored. I'm bored. <laughs> it's great to see, isn't it? Oh, I love it. All three of them playing together. I mean, shock horror. We've actually been seeing them play a lot together. And, you know, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that there's been really no TV and no computer time, so they've had to find other things to do to occupy themselves, and it's brought them closer together. It's fantastic, it's brilliant to see. Off to Lisa. To Landry Matt. In the afternoon, Mum had to run some errands. Darren! Matthew! Darren, come here! But getting the kids out of the house proves to be a big battle. Go get your clothes on. Get a shirt on now. Go get your shoes on. You're gonna get dressed, Devin. <laughs> Finally, we managed to make it to the car, but things didn't get any easier. You got two seconds to get that seatbelt on. I'm throwing this door in the garbage can. No, you're gonna give it. Get it. Well, once again, it was Devon who drew his sword, and it started to kick off all over again. You're not getting it out. Enough. Elisa was like, "That's it. Out the car. We're not going." Let's go, guys. I'm so sick of fighting with them. It sucks. And the decision you've made is what? Not to go anywhere. To never get anything done half the time. I can't believe what I was hearing. This little boy was dictating a whole family and what they were going to do. Guys, let's Devin's go. Devin's the boss of this house. However Devin feels is what we decide to do. It really sucks to be controlled by Devin. He's only six, and it sucks that he runs our whole life. You're ready to go now? All right, Devin's ready. Let's go, guys. Well, after waiting around for a while, the king of the castle decided it was time for us to go, and there we were. Take two. Devin's ready. Try again. Do not undo. Do not push my face again. Now that is it, Devin. I've had it. Sometimes I feel like pulling my hair out. I was pissed. Stop hitting me. Stop. Smacking Devin obviously wasn't stopping him. We managed to make it out of the driveway, and then within seconds, the boys were at it again. Just sit down. Me. We'd only driven two blocks when Lee sat to stop the car to put Devon back in his seatbelt. Just stay there because we're just going home. And unbelievably, Mum drove all the way back home and Devon got his own way. They can't act up right in the car, then we just go home and we don't go anywhere. This was such a big ordeal and they achieved absolutely nothing. You're all going to your room until John comes home. I've had it. It's done. It's over. I'm done. Go to your room. I had enough. It's never ending. It never stops. Hey, Lisa had just had it. And before she was about to throw in the towel, the man of the house walked in. Thank God. It would have been terrible. Devin. Matt. Gary. Straight away, John started barking out those orders. Put the sand down. Put it down. That's enough. Up. John's a little scary. He yells so loud that he sounds like a lion. Oh, get a towel now. Clean it up. It's not funny. What is my normal? This floor is going to be ruined now. All the water's underneath it. You think that's funny? I don't think it's too funny. I scare them by raising my voice. Then they do what they're told. I'm fine with that. Sit down and start eating yeah. the rest of it. <laughs> Sit down. It makes me angry that the boys give John more respect than they give to me because I'm the one that you know, it's with them all the time. I should be the one that gets the respect, not everybody else. This house is just run on intimidation and aggression. And it's not working. Lisa and John just need to find another way in dealing with things. Our youngest is Brinley. She's two and a half. 
Ireland is four. And Allison is seven. Next is Alexa, she's eight. Alexis, eat and quiet. Haley is 12. And the oldest is our only son, Josh, and he's 13. Steve works full time. All right, I'll be back. I own my own insurance brokerage, and Lisa's at home with all six kids all day. Shut up! Shut up! Don't know what I'm going to do with my children and the way that they're acting. Shut up before I kill you! I'll use mommy's skin, and I'll kill you. Seven minutes, don't talk. <laughs> they know how to push me around, and I just don't know how to control them anymore. Six kids and one mom who's given up. Haley's probably the most difficult of them all. You're stupid. That means you're fat. <laughs> She's actually gotten to be very conniving, talks back. Actually, you're the She has much attitude towards us. I'm going to stab you with this knife. You know what? For talking like that, I'm going to duct tape your mouth. No! Alexis is very high strung, very hyper little girl. Tail Don't too. be mean to him. Alexis, I'm not going to chase you. She's like a wild animal. Alexis. A reptile. <laughs> she says offensive things to people. Who? Oh. <laughs> Alexis, stop it. I'm just really tired of dealing with it. Well, when I come home, I feel things are out of control, and I'm always faced with having to deal with things. What's going on? Nobody knows what's going on unless you talk. I feel like I'm the one who's having to take control when I get home. No talking, just... How do you trust us? No, what are we going to do for dinner? I don't know. It's your night. You can do it. Dinner time is out of control every day. We never sit down and eat as a family. As soon as you're done eating, I'll start your timer. There's fighting, yelling, food throwing. <laughs> oh. What's with the food all over the floor? You're having a food fight. We're both at our breaking point with the kids. What do you think you're doing? Nothing we do is effective. We're, we're spreading ourselves so thin that we can't give the attention that each one of them deserves to have. Shut up! Allie! Come on. This is sad, really, really sad. We've got a house full of people that are completely disconnected. I would love to get everything working together again. I wish you was dead. And just be a quiet, getting along type family with no yelling. Super Nanny, bring it on. We need your help. We need somebody to come change the recipe for us. Because what we're doing is not working. Well, Mum may have given up, but I certainly haven't. I'm on my way. Haley is a troublemaker, but from what I see, it seems that Haley spends most of her time defending herself from Alexis. You're one sick kid. Open Ow. the door. She's spinning on Out you. of Daddy's office. Get out! She's spinning. I don't know why you're running around. She's spinning. OK, go sit on the couch. Can't you hear her going quick? Mum tolerates it. And that's why Alexis is as wild as she is. Do it to John. Stop! <laughs> She's spinning on me. You girls need to stop. Haley, you're grounded today. Didn't I ask for your help, Haley, putting all this stuff away? Mum tells me that she keeps Haley busy with chores so that she keeps her out of trouble. But what does she keep Alexis busy with? You could start with that to keep you busy. You need to grab all that and pick it up. No, Haley, not... load up and rinse off the dishes. Sheets need to be folded. Clothes need to be put away. That's your chore, Haley. Do it now. Haley's fully aware that she's being treated very differently to the rest of her sisters and brother, and she's now rebellion towards that. So what do you do in the house? Like, what's your responsibilities? I do a lot of chores. You do a lot of chores? Mm-hmm. Your other brothers and sisters, they do a lot of chores? I do the most. Do you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How come you do the most, then? My mom usually gets mad, and so I help. Her mother tends to vent all her frustration out on Haley. They're not going to be close if she continues to behave like this. Do you think your family's happy? You have the label parents. But when did you decide that you wouldn't parent? <clears throat> what do you mean by that? Where did you get to the point where it was easier to just give up? You have children that are out of control. And you clearly did give up, Lisa. You clearly did go, 
I'm out of here. Yeah, I did. I mean, they don't listen. They don't listen to me. We know what we're doing is not working, but every time we try something new, it just doesn't, it doesn't work out, so, you know. The first thing that I noticed straight away, I want to discuss Haley and your relationship with Haley Lisa. Okay. The one that's very unfair. Numerous amounts of times yesterday, I watched you put chores onto Haley that neither the other children had. It was, Haley, do this. Haley, do that. What are you doing lounging? Because she's the one that causes most of the problems. Your other children were playing up and misbehaving, and yet nothing was done with them. Well, we've got a lot of major issues with her. Just because she shows you the capacity to take what you put on her shoulders, it doesn't mean that she deserves to be treated like that. I'm done talking about that right now. Well, I'm not done by far about talking about it. I see a detachment with you and Haley that's really unhealthy. And the way you're treating her is wrong. Yesterday, when it came to Alexis and Haley being in trouble, there was Haley inside the house whilst Alexis was out in the poolside. I couldn't get her out of the pool. I mean, what do you want me to do? Jump in and yeah. grab her out? Yeah. The fact is, is that you're lazy and you don't do nothing about it. We can't get them to do what, what we ask them to do. So who's going to change that? Unless you guys do. But what I'm not seeing from the pair of you is a willingness to take responsibility for what's happened here. Instead, you want to go, well, that's how it is. We've got six kids, you know? We just don't know how to do it. Take responsibility for it. Let's talk about family time. We try and do our, our family time, but it doesn't work out. Right now, nothing works uh, out, Lisa. I mean, what, what did you do with the kids yesterday where you were spending even time with two of them? I didn't have time yesterday. What was you doing then? Picking up, running around, making them lunch, making them breakfast. Well, that, that, that's what every other mother does, Lisa. You make time. You sit down and, and you have fun with your, with your kids. I mean, isn't that why you had six kids? Didn't you want to be a mother? Yeah. And have relationships with each one of your kids? And that really concerns me, because they need your love. How much do you know about your kids? You know, I, we do a lot more with our kids than I think you think we do. Eight hours with the TV on, the computers, the video games. I mean, really, it's a babysitter. Dinner time, nobody eating around the table together as a family. No core. Well, you know, we try to eat together as a, as a family, but everybody's screaming and throwing this and crying and needing to go to a timeout. And... You know, despite what you're seeing on the outside, the temper tantrums, the shouting. They want the rules, they want the expectations. They need that guidance. I'm willing to try anything. Lisa? I'm willing to, to try and get it to work. I just feel like, uh, like there's nothing we can do to change. But I know that if you're willing to have some faith in what we're about to do here, and you're prepared to step up that we can make some serious changes here. It's going to be hard work because you've spent so many years getting it to this place. So are we ready? I'm ready. Yeah? OK, let's go then. There's been a lot of resentment built up, you know, over the years with Hayley. And I think it's time, as we are starting everything fresh, to really make amends with Hayley. Talk to her, mother to daughter, about how you want to be able to really have a relationship with her. And I think she needs to know that you love her and that you care about her a lot. And I'm going to suggest that after you've had that conversation, we go off and, and take Hayley and yourself bowling. OK. Just you and her, you know? Create some new history. When I faced Hayley, it was kind of hard because we haven't really connected and talked about things. We're gonna go out, and it's just gonna be you and me, and we're gonna get to go bowling. It's just gonna be you and I. It was so important for her to go into Haley's bedroom and to talk to her daughter, but everything was prompted. Lisa did nothing impulsively from her heart. So it's really great that we've spoke about how much fun we're gonna have together, but we've missed the emotion. 
miss the emotion. I think you need to talk about your relationship. Um, if there's any issues with anything, I want you to know that you can always come to me. Why? Why can she come to you? Because I'm her mom, and she can depend on me and trust me to help her. If you can't be open with your daughter, we can't bridge the gap between you and Haley. So what are you going to do to change so that you can have a better relationship with Haley? The yelling's been um, more directed to you. From now on, it's not going to be screaming. It's just going to be talking to you and telling you the things that you're doing wrong. But make sure you always know that you can come to me. I think you should give each other a big squeeze, huh? <laughs> yeah, a big hug. Lean over. What's this? Hold your daughter and your mum, huh? When Joe had mom hug me, it made me feel like I have my family back. I don't remember the last time Mama hugged me. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, I have to get socks and, and shoes. She's still very alienated from the family and won't allow herself to get close to her children at all. You cut yourself off from receiving your kids' love. So every time you get close, it makes you emotional. You both deserve to hug each other and feel each other's love. It's a beautiful thing, okay? I want you to do that at bowling. All right, lots of hugs and kisses. OK, let's connect physically, all right, and emotionally with our children. OK. See you later. awkward right now, <laughs> but know. you know what, you got to be able to do it, you know what I mean? You've got to connect with her. When I approached Lisa about being more tactile with Hayley, she couldn't really bring herself to do that. Two left. Almost. I'm gonna meet you. So she's still very detached and removed from her children. That's very worrying for me, because the children do need to receive a lot more than what Lisa's willing to give right now. Hi, Clyde. Good girl. Get the scissors, Haley. You line it up with this, draw a line, and you cut it, and then you make a little thing like that, and then you put Okay, go ahead and cut it. Jennifer taught me this. You just make a hole in the middle of the strip, and it makes a little... I think it's a little bow. Very, very nice. What I love here is that you're actually taking the time to sit down with Haley and just do the things that she needs to do. And you were helping her, and at the same time, that space was allowing you to bond. Mm -hmm. I'm very pleased to see that, Lisa. So with what I have seen, I would love to work with the pair of you on tweaking things that need doing. Are we ready to do some more? I'm ready. Yeah, yeah great, OK. So let's get moving, then. OK. There's always more than one way of being able to put a message across. And I was very concerned about Lisa and her language. What we have here, some lemons and some sugar. OK, so, Mum, let's put a lemon in our mouth. There it goes. Look at what it tastes like. It's gross. Her facial expressions said it all. Yeah, this is really, like, bitter. Kids, we'll take a piece of lemon. Mm. Go on, just take it right in. Right all in. Sorry. The lemon is language. That taste in her mouth is exactly what she leaves in her kids every time she chooses to use words that hurt them. Now take a piece of the sugar. Ready? Yeah? What was the best, the lemon or the sugar? Sugar. And sugar is love. And that's what these kids need. If we put lemon and sugar together, <gasps> what does it make? Lemonade! Exactly. And we all like lemonade, don't we? Yep. yep. At the end, I, I understood what she was saying. I still have some hard spots, but I'm learning. We're learning together. <laughs> <laughs>
I saw that Logan was given the task to look after the kids with mum. I mean, he is Mr. Mum. We're gonna be gone for a little bit. Logan is in charge. In submission, I had seen that Logan helps out a lot with the kids. So what I did was send mum and dad out so I could see exactly how Logan manages those kids. Yeah, Cameron, no, you cannot have the bubbles. No. Those jellies. He gets kind of frustrated when the kids are misbehaving when mom and dad are out. Get out of the office. I don't really enjoy watching over that many kids at one time. It's just too stressful, yeah. it's too chaotic. Corbin? Corbin? <laughs> Chaslin and... Get out. Corbin? Corbin? Stop. Stop. How about you try? Corbin, just, just go. You, you. Why don't you go upstairs? By the time Mum and Dad got back, Logan was absolutely numb from having to take care of those kids. He's stressed out. I was really eager to talk to Logan, and so I had a conversation with him that really spoke volumes. You're, you're like a like a, a manny, a nanny. Yeah. OK, so, so when does Logan get to uh, hang out with his buddies and just chill? Not very often. Really? This 15-year-old doesn't get a chance to be a 15-year-old and hang out with his friends. So he is robbed of his teenage years at the moment. He's got to be raising his siblings. You feel like it's your responsibility? No. I mean, they're not my kids. I mean, they're my brothers, but they're not my kids. It's, I mean, I'm, not the, I'm not a parent. It's not my responsibility to discipline them, to be watching them. Do you actually say to them, or do you feel like you can't? Or... It's my parents. Yeah. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I feel like I can say that. I mean, it's kind of like... I've kind of stepped it in there a little bit, and my mom just kind of blows at me. Just kind of, I mean, she really gets mad. Like, you know, it's your responsibility as the oldest. It's too much. Sometimes to the point where it's like, uh, you know, I've gotten sick over it. Where you live with migraines, panic attacks? I mean, what do you? you uh, I've had one panic attack before. Yeah. For a 15-year-old child to have this because the burden of the responsibility they're given at such a young age to me is, is just not right. This afternoon, I have turned my attention to Logan so mum and dad can see exactly the undue burden that has been put on him, looking after all of these kids. So we've got more work this afternoon for the pair of you. We're going to go into the other room here. OK. Logan's afraid to speak to his parents, so what I have done is set up a curtain so that he can freely express himself without feeling intimidated by mum and dad's reactions. I, mean, I don't want to whine, but the responsibilities, you know, have been a little too much. I don't, I don't want to seem like, you know, I can't handle them. I mean, I can, just not for the time period that I've been. It makes me, like, angry and upset. Sometimes I just can't deal with it. You know, it just kind of gets me to the point where I just kind of want to, want to walk off. What do you mean by walk off? Well, I guess leave. So you felt like running away from it all? Yes. And if you felt like you've been able to come to mom and dad and tell them that? Not so much. Del, I asked you to pull back the curtain. I, I did run away, Logan, when I was, I was probably about 17. Because I felt as though that my dad really wasn't listening to me. I just want to keep the communication open. Just say, hey, we got to sit down and talk. I'll take the responsibility of the kids when I'm home rather than unload it on you. That's my job. I'm sorry, OK, Ma? I do love you, OK? Don't ever forget, all right? That afternoon, Jared came home from school, and it wasn't long before a liar came into his room and stole his playing cards. Oh, no! <laughs> What's happened here? There were my cards on the floor. I gotta pick them all up. Hello? Well, what happens when your sisters, they just throw your cards on the floor and they take your stuff? What, what does, what does mummy and daddy do about it? Nothing. Parent, quit doing that. I'm not. It's action. Am I 
just threw all my cards on the floor. Did you hear that mom just said Jerry quit that? And it was really... And it, and it was really... Um, Ashlyn. Melora, she wasn't listening. And that's very disheartening because it shows Jared that his sisters can do exactly what they want to him and there's no consequences. Jared hardly said a word, and Melora sent him to his bedroom. I mean, this was so unfair. Hi. May I come in? You know when you speak to uh, Mummy and John, do they listen to you? Sometimes they're so busy, I, I try to talk to them, and they're just like, go, Jared, I have to take care of this. Um, John. So what do you do then? You deal with it yourself? Yeah. I think Jared, in a way, has kind of given up on voicing what he feels because he knows what the result will be, that every time he voices his opinion, it's his bedroom where he's going to end up. It's really important that you always tell Mummy what's going on in here, OK, and in here, and how you're feeling. Jared, he's a very smart boy who likes to talk and voice his opinion. Yet when he does, he's disciplined for it. You get so irate that you end up saying, go to your room, time out, you're instigating trouble. And yet all he was doing was voicing his opinion. For him to be able to stand up and be counted for in this family is for him to be able to have a voice and express himself. Why do you both not allow him to do that? That afternoon, Jared came home from school. Jared doesn't always get the chance to express to his parents how important his feelings are. And so I brought in a thought box for him. Any time he has a thought, whether it be happy or sad or an idea or something that he wants to share, that he write it on the paper and then fold it and put it into the box. And then every evening, Melora, I'd like you to sit down once the girls are in bed and say, hey, let's talk about what you've written down. Okay. What do you think of that, Jared? Good. Think that'd be a good idea? Mm-hmm. Do it with Mum. And you can tell Mum why you think it'd be a good idea. Because I can talk to you without having to interrupt the girls. I think it's a great idea. Next, I wanted to show the family exactly how overloaded these girls are with their chores. Dishwasher. Me. Breakfast. Me. OK, laundry. Mom. Fold clothes. Yeah, it's everyone. I'll, yeah. <clears throat> everyone. <laughs> Brittany. Yeah. Right, let's go. Mom, Mom and Dad have a notable disagreement on that one, but that's OK. I don't think they have good communication with their father. They are in fear of his reaction. You don't agree? You fold the clothes, though, right? Yeah. I will stand up to my parents, and Brittany is more afraid to stand up to my parents. Give me your argument. Why do you feel you fold the clothes more? Because I have been doing it more lately. What's lately? The very last time laundry was done? No. She does it all the time when you guys are gone. Oh, Isn't that... boy. Yeah. <laughs> Just as I was going over the chores, I saw that Brittany looked a little pale, a little faint. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Prince. Brittany. Prince. Call 911. She just passed out. 